Yeah. Yeah, we can. Yeah. I want you to Great. do switching. Great. I want you to leave the camera on. Hey, Bruce. Yeah. Some people are just spamming. Okay. It's okay. Don't worry about that next time. All right, so. You're going to see me now? Are you logged in as, uh, do you have admin over there? No. no. I don't know how to log in. I don't know my password. <laughs> it's okay. So, um, all right. So, um, what's your name? Adam Stradley. Adam, okay, cool. Do you want us to put your name on the, on the lower third? Uh, excuse me? You want me to put your name on the lower third on the, on the screen? Sure. Do you want me to do that, where it says Jared, just change it, please. You know how to do that? Um, Hang on one sec. Uh, do you know how to do it, Ed? Is this through Skype? Just... Well, we're just, we're just uh, listening to you audio through Skype, yeah, but. Oh. <clears throat> Hold on. Okay, tell me how to spell your name. A D A M. Mm -hmm. And then Stradley. S T R A D L I N G. Okay. So I got A D A M S T R A D L I N G, right? Yep, S T R A D L I N G, correct. Gotcha. Okay. Hang on one second. See Ed? Flip, flip. Okay. See that he's changed there, see? Okay. See how I click this? Yeah, and then I click this. <laughs> one second, Adam. Thanks for hanging in there. Yeah, no problem. Oh, crap. I'm, I'm going to block yeah. some people on the other yeah. chat room. They're just... Making it way bad. Ugh. Yeah, some dudes are spamming like crazy. Ooh. Trying to block this guy. It's the hosting one, right? The top one? Where is he? Let's get the password again. Yes, that's right. Leave it. Please leave it. 
Okay, can you just keep the camera going? Okay. All right, you ready, Adam? I am. Okay, cool. Uh, chat room, can you hear Adam? Hey, chat room, can you hear Adam? Um, some no, some yes. Some no, yes. Some, yes, you can hear him. Some okay. not really. Yeah, I know, it's not the greatest. We're going to get better here, but we'll make it, we'll make it work. Okay, so just do what you can with that, man. All right, so let's begin. Ready? Right. Okay, five, four, three. Hello and welcome everybody to the Bitcoin Show, episode four. <laughs> Today, uh, uh, Manny Mena and myself, Bruce Wagner, are on the line with uh, Adam. You just switched the lower third. Hold on. Adam Strandling, is it? Hold on one second. Let me get back to it. Adam Strandling, right? Yep. Who's a programmer with uh, TradeHill.com, and uh, today's breaking news obviously is all about Mt. Gox. Mt. Gox has been hacked, and uh, it's of great concern to everyone. So, so Adam, you're a programmer <laughs> at TradeHill, is that right? Um, no, actually, Bruce, um, I'm one of the one of the co-founders, so I'm actually not um, doing the development. Oh, okay. Uh, but myself and Jared uh, basically kind of put this business together. Um, from the beginning, and uh, based back in uh, one of his partners. Okay, sounds great. So, uh, so tell us. I mean, there, there's a, there's tons and tons of questions flying around about what's going on with uh, with Trade Hill, and um, I'm sorry, with uh, Mount Gox. So, what's your take on it? Well, I mean, first off, you know, I'd just like to say that. Uh, you know, we are, uh, you know, we are sympathetic to what Mark is probably going through right now. And we understand that he's obviously put a lot into this over the past. And he's been a, a, a you know, a member of this community that's done a lot yeah. um, to, to build it up. And, uh, you know, uh, whether or not they trade with us or some of the other exchanges that come up, you know, it's important that, uh, you know, Mount Gox is, uh, you know, continues and does well. And uh, I think we all face similar issues going forward. The usability of the Bitcoin, the security, and, and other such things. So I hope that, that Mark is doing all right. Um, we will say that Mark did give us a whole bunch of information for us to cross-reference uh, potential, uh, you know, uh, basically uh, people who could have been involved with this. Mm -hmm. um, and we're our, our programmers are looking into that now. We'll be in communication with them on that. So we thank you for that, and uh, you know, we'll we'll be looking at that closely. Wow, that's good. And so. Yeah. Yeah, so what about people, uh, I mean, there's word in the forum that um, the, not only the email addresses, but also the, the hash of the passwords were in the original file, but now people are claiming that they have uh, plain text copies of people's uh, passwords. And, and so what, what can people do about that? What do you suggest that the public do about that? Yeah. Um... Well, you know, there's, uh, you know, I, I have to, um, you know, my, my, you know, technical capability is, uh, I mean, somewhat, to speak about some of the more details of technical capabilities, um, that would be something that we're actually going to make a statement on later mm -hmm. in our current systems. But, I mean, traditional, you know, password security, um, you know, as part of that relies with the user in terms of choosing, you know, uh, kind of, uh, well, uh, you know, strong passwords. And then, of course, you know, we, we froze our site and, you know, recommended people change their passwords and have, um, you know, frozen withdrawals and, and deposits um, until we can ensure that, that there are no problems on our side. Uh, you know, so, uh, you, you know, there's, um, I mean, there's, there's, there's things that can be done on both sides, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, I don't think it's in anybody's interest at all for there to be only one exchange site, obviously. We, everybody kind of wants... Competition, as Jared has said, uh, it's important that we have alternatives to do trade, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, so, you feel the same way? Yeah, I mean, you know, the uh, you know the reality situation is is we're in a business very similar to you know, uh, or what's becoming to be very similar to what a lot of banking institutions face. And, uh, you know, they still have problems themselves. I mean, it was just recently MasterCard, I, uh, I believe, found that they had gotten hacked. A lot of information was taken. Um, so, you know, security is a big issue. But, uh, uh, you know, it's, um, uh, 
you know, we, we all, we're all, we're all thinking, and, and Mark, you know, obviously has uh, started this, and, and uh, you know, we're, we're dealing in a new arena, so um, it's not, uh, you, know, it, I, you know, we don't recommend to people when we put this in the Observer article, you know, don't, don't bet the house. Um, you know, there, there are issues, and we know that this time, you know, empty Gox was a big target because a lot of the money coming through there, um, and it is possible that, you know, people could, you know, target us soon. Um, and as we post it on the forum, you know, we, we're going to do a security audit. We're going to give people information on our current system. And, uh, you know, we, we just want to be transparent and, uh, and work on, on focus on security and making that, uh, you know, uh, dealing with that issue. Because now that the Bitcoin has a, a, you know, a real tangible value is being used and this economy is growing, then the security of, of this money is going to be a growing issue. And I think this is a... You know, this is a big, big example of it. Absolutely. The, um, you know, a lot of people are asking things like, uh, I mean, I know you don't know directly, but um, people are questioning why does uh, Mt. Gox seem to have so many, you know, security flaws? Is it, yeah. you know, is it, the, is it the coding? Is it the responsibility of the coder? Is it just that there, it just wasn't up to snuff as far as the uh, amount of volume that they're handling, or just the amount of attacks from all different angles. Or, or what do you? What's your take on that? Do you have any idea? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, you know, what exactly their security paradigm is, and we really wanted to basically bring our our program our programmer onto the show tonight, and he was more than happy to do that to talk about what we're doing. Unfortunately, you know, it's been a pretty crazy day. We've been getting a lot of emails, and we had him on the line here, but we couldn't. We couldn't bring them in, so I just think in general the the entire business needs to take another evolutionary step, and mm -hmm. uh, so, you know security is going to be a part of that. Um, we we hope to be able to work with the community to you know ensure that 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 we provide that for our service, and uh, you know and, and I had mentioned on our post I post a lot today. We introduced ourselves today. All of our profiles are online. Who we are, um, we, we basically are just going to put forth our best efforts to, you know, ensure that that business is conducted, you know, appropriately under the principles that we set forth. So, uh, you know, that's I think uh, I, I think in, in security is going to be a big, big issue. So, um, I had recommended in the forum that we we kind of work together to set up a task for force where we set up a, a, a central place where people could come up with thoughts on better ways to do security. Maybe potential ways to hack down some, uh, to track down some of the thieves, and uh, you know maybe a, a spot with like a, a WikiLeaks where if anybody knows anything, they can, you know, put put forth an answer anonymously. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and this came about because we were actually contacted by the person who was uh, lost a significant amount of money two days before out of Gox, and uh, then we were contacted by another person also who said that they had been hacked. So we just formulated that idea and said it would be a great thing for people to, be, to participate in. This seems to be a problem. And then, you know, what do you know? Here on Sunday, you know, this is this is arisen. So, um, you know, that's I mean, that's that's kind of what we're what we're thinking right now. Yeah, I, mean, I know you, you probably I mean, unless you have some inside information, you may just be speculating. But a lot of people ask, like, why? I mean, why was the cracker so stupid? Apparently, like like if somebody apparently there's all kinds of theories running around. Like the person had access to this data for three days and why didn't they just slowly steal money a thousand dollars a day and not say anything? Um, if people, you know what I mean? It's like, and then suddenly also there were the rumors that he was trying to sell the list, um, just yeah. like a day before. And then all of a sudden published it. It, it's, uh, it seems very strange. The, the, uh, course of events. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I know I mean, that Mt. Gox actually has that thousand dollar a day limit on withdrawals if you're not if you don't have ID on file, which might actually have saved them. That might have been actually what saved them yeah. in this case. Right. But, right. Um. So yeah, I mean, these these are, these are great questions. You know, why why did it happen? How did it happen? Um, you know, what could have been done differently? Uh, and uh, you know, you know, how did it happen? I mean, right now I've been watching the forums closely. As people know, um, you know, over the past week, as we put in our post, <laughs> we were just basically trying to make sure that we were, we were we were delivering for our customers, and we didn't have as much time to be on the forums. Um, and uh, you know, so there's a lot of things going on, uh, things people saying a lot of different things on what actually happened. So I I don't I'm, I don't know if the verdict's out on on the reality of the situation. Um, you know, personally, I've seen quite a few different things, so mm -hmm. I'm not sure what what that is. So I mean. 
I'm not sure if I could comment on on what it what it what exactly happened until uh, there's a better kind of diagnostic that that occurs. Um, I know, like you're saying, there's different different rumors. People were in there; they already did. Obviously, there was some evidence and signs of this, right? Right. So, in in the future, you know, maybe it would be advisable if if one site or one exchange does get hacked. I mean, especially for that big amount, just to shut it down, right? Right. And look at look at everything that's going on. I mean, at this point, we don't see we 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 obviously looking looking closely at our system. We don't see any evidence that anything's been compromised on our side, and we're confident in our current level of security. Um, but we're also we're new, so you know I, I don't want to be here and say that you know uh, yeah we're equivalent to anything like Goldman Sachs. I mean that's you know that's not the reality. Um, right. You know, but we're confident, and, and we've t double and triple checked our systems. We've slowed up the process to ensure that there's no nothing going on that that looks fishy. And uh, you know, uh, security is going to be a huge thing going forward. And right. uh, we really hope that you know people in the community can speak to each other about it in an objective manner, because obviously, there's uh, I, I just from looking at the forums, um, there's been a bit of uh, you know con contention on on who's doing what. Yeah. Um, but I think it's something we all need to, to deal with if this, uh, you know, if we're going to make this target grow, which the, is everybody. So. They were asking on the, um, on the chat rooms, uh, they wanted to know, um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, they wanted to know um, how uh, would they be able to, what are you guys doing different? How are the passwords being stored? Um, is there any hashing going on of the yeah. passwords or any salting, as they call it? Um, that was one of the more interesting questions. And then when uh, would Trade Hill be opened back up? Those were the two big ones. Right. And then uh, and another question. I know I'm throwing a lot of questions at you, but uh, can you hear us, Ed? Can you hear everybody? Okay, good. Yeah, yeah so um, anyway, another question I have, like on Mount Gox, it seems like uh, this is becoming a pattern where there are brute force attacks on users' passwords. And because people are just not treating it seriously and they're just using the same password as they do on their email or they're just putting a simple you know, mama puppy password, and they're just brute force attacking it and getting in. And that seems like what a lot of these attacks seem to be coming from. I wonder if there's a way to require a long, strong password and even require it to be changed every 60 days or something. What do you think yeah, about that? I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, to, to answer um, his original question about the technicalities of the storage of our passwords, um, I don't want to purvey any inaccurate information um, so I, I don't I don't have a, a clear answer on that. However, what I will do is uh, I will we will speak right now after we get off. And like I was saying, we were going to have the program on, on this, but because of the way we merged these calls, it wasn't possible. We've been going through having a lot of business and uh, you know over here going on. Um, I will get an answer on that in terms of password security. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what? Uh, yeah. for, and, and and what was the other one? Oh, well, we better be back up. Yeah. Um, that I actually can't answer effectively either. I need to basically speak with with our lead programmer and see when he wants to when he wants to go live on this. Well, I know Jared um, said that you know one of the reasons that you want to uh, halt things is because um, there's a fear that people uh, may have used the same password on both, which is probably very very yeah. likely, and yeah, that's that, a very prudent thing. I think that's very good good move on you guys' part. Yep, yeah, that that was absolutely one of the reasons. I'm sure yeah. there's been uh, reports of uh, Gmail. Being uh, getting notices because people are trying to, they're assuming that that's their Gmail password and so they're trying to hack into their Gmail accounts and all that. So obviously anybody who's listening to this, make sure that if you know if you've used that password for anything anywhere, change it immediately. Yeah, yeah. And that's and and obviously that's what we've asked to do. And uh, so you know, to, with your question in terms of password security, I think it's a little bit of of people with knowledge coming in and choosing. Choosing their you know secure passwords and, and having them not being in more than one place and not using it for too many of the same things, but of course if, if we want Bitcoin to be used by people who are not necessarily as tech savvy, then I think that's a great a great issue to bring up because uh, um, you know we have people who come to us and we really have to explain to them you know what what Bitcoin's about and we take the time to do that um, and we have the people working with us who are willing to do that um, in, in our model. And so you, you kind of have two, two, uh, a couple different types of customer here. So whatever we can do on our end to you know, help the kind of non-tech savvy customer um, use this more effectively, then that'll be excellent. And I think that'll be uh, helpful for everybody and helpful for us. And then for, for tech savvy people, I think it's just a bigger security matter. Letting them know, you know kind of where we're at right now um, and what, what our plan is going forward. Um, because I think the reality of the situation is as 
you know, uh, you know, Bitcoin grows, and if Trade Hill, you know, grows and continues to do well, then um, we will definitely become a target of a target of attacks, and we need to be prepared for that. So, um, you know, that's that's kind of what our, our, the view. What about the? Um I mean, how many programmers do you employ, and, and what is their experience level with this sort of thing? Yeah, so uh, you know, like I put in, in the forum, um, our senior senior programmer uh, it used to work for um, a startup uh, commercial space flight company based out of uh, out of Los Angeles, um, and uh, he's run a series of internet based businesses and has has over three hundred iPhone apps. Um, uh, really credentials, comes from a cognitive science and computer science background, um, and basically, you know, did all the software design for putting rockets in space. And uh, those rockets, you know, they put four to six up right now um, at this point. Obviously, he hasn't been with them for, you know, uh, maybe a year and a half, I think. I, I would, might need to be corrected on that. Um, and then, of course, we have Francisco, who's on the, the profiles there, and he worked for, uh, you know, one of the largest retail and commercial banks in all the U.S. Um, everybody would know them if we mentioned who they are, but obviously I can't for confidential reasons in his contract. And he was on their database engineering and, and data analytics team, and they were actually all using and dealing with high net worth customer data. Mm -hmm. So this is very sensitive uh, data of all of this bank's most wealthiest clients. Um, so, you know, those two combined are basically our kind of lead people. Um, we put on our profile out there, you know, showing, uh, you know, the four partners. We're all pretty much working full time on this, um, and then we do have some support people um, who are working with us. But we're really not commenting on the number of people that we have um, working on that, and uh, you know, that's basically just private, private information for us. Um, we're more than happy, you know, as we go on further to give you more credentials on our lead programmers, and then of course, you know, on our security setup going forward. And um, are you guys planning on disabling, you know, like user accounts after an X amount of, you know, incorrect tries? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, what was that? If, if, if you guys are planning at all to disable user accounts after an X amount of, you know, invalid tries or incorrect tries. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not aware of what our current, how, how we're currently handling that. Um, Actually, hold on here. He's 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 messaging me. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually don't know um, how we're currently handling that, but that's another question in terms of uh, user accounts, cycling user user accounts, right? Uh, yes, uh, like just trading accounts. Because what if somebody is trying to log in uh, to a compromised user's account from Mt. Gox? What if they're trying to go on Trade Hill and see if he has any funds? in that trade hole account. After an X amount of tries, um, would there be a plan, you know, to disable that account at least temporarily? To sort I mean, of fend that, off that sort of pretty, I mean, that's pretty, pretty, pretty typical of most, most sites that you use. I personally have, haven't tried that functionality and I don't have a direct answer for that and I don't want to say something that, I, that is in our, inaccurate. So I will get that answered immediately and we will make a post on that immediately too. Um, my assumption would be that, that, that that's correct, but uh, that's, uh, that's, that's purely an assumption at this point. Um, uh, uh, I got a question for you. What do you, what do you. How do you feel about the idea of, in, in an emergent, sort of an emergency situation like this, Mt. Gox actually, their decision to reverse the trades, uh, to you know, roll back the clock on those trades? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's also an issue that's that, that's been up in the air. Um, I, I think in general, uh, you know, if, if they find something that isn't in in unison with the rules set out, kind of the rules of the game with the exchange, mm -hmm. then there, you should have be able to to, to reverse that. Um, that's my initial thoughts about that. Um, I would be interested to to look at how it, you know exchanges, different exchanges across the world, actually handle those situations. Um, as you know, there was a flash crash that happened on May 9th, I believe, this year, mm -hmm. and I know that there were some situations where people actually didn't revert. There, uh, a lot of trades weren't reverted. Um, so, I mean, I'd be happy to hearing you know a, a discussion around this in the community on what would be the best you know the the, the best option. Right. Um, I, mean, I, I know that there's, there's probably pros and cons for both, 
Um, but, I mean, fundamentally, if somebody comes in and does something that is not, you know, ethical or within the game of the rules, I think that we should make best efforts to, you know, right the wrong of people who have been harmed by that. And um, I think that's kind of more of a fundamental principle. Um, uh, but there might be there might be beneficiaries or uh, on both sides of that equation. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people are very unhappy about uh, not getting those ten thousand bitcoins at ten cents a piece. Uh, right. They were very happy when they got them and having it reversed. Yeah. But it's not really yeah. like you say it's not really fair and equitable trade. So it kind of has to happen. Who I mean, in in a situation like this, you know. People have to watch the system 24 hours a day, too. It's, it's not just being yeah. able to deal with yeah. it, but it's yeah. literally like being a fireman. If, there's a, if yeah. something happens, you never know. Seconds count, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And that is one, you know, one, one thing that we, uh, we, we always have somebody, you know, on board with us at all times mm -hmm. um, looking at what's happening. So that's good for us. I mean, I don't know if 100% uh, um, how many people were working uh, with Mark, um, so you know I don't know how that how that was set up, but I know with us we have we have enough people right now where somebody is constantly on on board with us almost at all times during the day. Um, as you know, people probably see we've been answering emails at three a.m. So um, you know we're we're here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, but I mean, you all do you have somebody around the clock twenty four seven watching for things like that? Well, I mean, at, at this point, um, uh, I, I don't. We ha we haven't assigned that task to somebody to watch this twenty four seven. To it's not something that we've 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 done. I mean, uh, I think we've kind of painted an appropriate picture and a realistic picture on our post. That we are we are four people, uh, uh, four partners. Um, we think our credentials are, are are good. I mean, we've all been successful in our ways working in banking and finance. Um, I've worked with some of the top investment banks. My largest consulting client right now is one of the top 10 private corporations in the world. In fact, I'm working on a project with them to set up a major exchange uh, uh, right now. So a completely different thing, but a, an exchange that, that basically works with all the, the big boys, all the real big banks. Um, and security, liquidity, posting collateral, kind of all these more you know, advanced things that, that go into clearing and execution um, is, is what we're looking at. Um, so... You know, right now we haven't applied to uh, have someone on that, and we've really just been hustling to make sure that we get our clients what we need over the last, you know, over the last week and a half since we opened up. Mm -hmm. and, and, and frankly, uh, you know, you can see your profiles, you can see who we are, we can see, you can see our backgrounds. It's all relevant, and uh, we we didn't know it was going to be this successful, um, uh, and, and we're not even there yet. Um, we came in, maybe we started doing this, planning this about three months ago, um, getting this set up. Uh, we ended up going live right, you know, a couple days between before Black Friday, and uh, you know we we just hustled to make sure we got everybody what they needed. So you know, are we doing our best? Yes. Um, can we improve? Absolutely. Um, do we think that we have the the skills, ability, and values to execute on a higher level and evolve this? Absolutely. So you know, that's I mean, that's you know, that's 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 our situation, and we hope that our our clients can can view that uh, as us being us mm -hmm. and make a decision if they want to continue dealing with us and, and, and work under the premise that we're going to be transparent and forthright with them on, on all our dealings. Do you feel that uh, Trade Hill is more secure than Mt. Gox right now? Um, I, I don't have a direct answer to that. One, because I don't know, uh, I don't know the level of security for Mt. Gox. Uh, what it was, obviously, it, it hasn't been that great. But the function of security is also a function of, of uh, you know, the, the skills and ability of, of the person, uh, you know, coming at the system. And until we know exactly what that took, then, I mean, I, I'm not sure if I could, you know, I, I could compare. I mean, our programmer says that he's confident in what we have going on mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, he thinks, uh, you know, there's an opportunity to do much more, you know, with security and make it more advanced, obviously, with this much money going around. Um, so... Uh, we can we can we can make another formal statement on that too. Um, it's just a straight up comparison. And, and Mount Gox versus us. What do we know, and why why do we think it, uh, either either now um, we're 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 more secure and, and backed up with some technical details? We're more than happy to make a statement on that very soon. Right. Yeah. I think a lot of people are interested in the technical details because uh, I mean I don't even know what a SQL injection is, but it sounds pretty bad. And uh, <laughs> they're saying, uh, Mark. Uh, 
from Mt. Gox earlier this week that the password field of the login screen was vulnerable to SQL injection and so on. And people, you know, when they when you just revert the transactions and you restore from a certain restore point back in time, the question is what else has been changed? If you you know, and when did this actually first happen? Could a could some you know code have been planted in there to allow a backdoor? I mean, all sorts of uh, security issues. It's you know, Bitcoin yeah. used to be just a fun little hobby, and it was pennies we were playing with. <laughs> now suddenly it's Fort Knox, right? Yeah, yeah. And suddenly yeah. we're serious. Well, and, and and you know, I just want to say I know there's probably some some technical people pulling their hair hair out at my answers right now. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I assure you guys that if you guys send us questions. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, we've written these questions down. We're, we're, we'll answer them for you, and we'll give them to you, um, you know, with accuracy. I have Jared here with me. Obviously, uh, Jared's been on the show before. Everybody knows mm -hmm. him for a while on the forums. Um, a friend of mine for 10 years. We, we obviously started this together. I'd like to let him speak right now. Sure. So uh, here he is. Hey, Jared. Hey, Bruce. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> You're surviving. You know, uh, I woke up this morning and I said, "You know what? Uh, finally, I can relax." It was my birthday <laughs> yesterday. I, uh, Happy I birthday! Slept about, thank you. <laughs> I slept about seven hours, and then I checked Twitter and I said, uh, "Actually, I'm not going to say what I said." What it you said? <laughs> <laughs> but I said, "Okay, I guess today I'm not going to be able to relax." So mm -hmm. um, I don't want to sound like we're really happy about this, um, but believe me, I mean, obviously we're going to benefit in some ways, but uh, this is not good for Bitcoin and we're doing no. everything we can to um, help everybody out here. Yeah, I mean I see that it's really, it's actually a beautiful thing uh, that the community pulls together even when you're, you know, so-called competitors and people assume, you know, the worst of, it, of people sometimes. But it's really a beautiful thing to see people pulling together even when people are, you know, theoretical competitors to, uh, because everybody cares, everybody has a huge vested interest in the success of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is still so new that it's vulnerable, right? Exactly, exactly. And and I've been following Bitcoin for I don't know about a year, and um, that's the thing that's really surprised me is the community is just so strong. It's mm -hmm. amazing, and uh, I think that's my biggest fear more than getting hacked and things like that. Is as it grows, the community will uh, lose control of it as it becomes more mainstream. Uh, just for some preface, uh, Jared is uh, one of the founders of TradeHill.com. Um, they were asking that on there, so I just thought I should point that out. Um, so there you go. Okay, cool. So, um, how, I mean, how are, let me put it this way, uh, what would you say to people who are wondering, what is Trade Hill going to do differently than Mt. Gox? Uh, you know, I mean, how serious are you taking security? Well, I mean, we're taking it very seriously. Uh, you know, like, like Adam said earlier, um, we're a huge target. Um, if you think that people are not attacking us, you're crazy. Um, if you think people weren't attacking empty Gox as soon as it had any real value behind it, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's very, very important. Um, I'd say it's our top priority. Um, obviously, uh, it, it takes, takes precedence over everything else. Um, we're continuously evaluating it. Like Adam said, we're having a third-party audit come in. We're going to make all the information public and available. Uh, we believe in transparency. Uh, one thing I can say that we are definitely implementing soon is a uh, as a second. Oh, I can't remember the technical name for it. I'm not a. I'm somewhat of a technical person, but I'm not a programmer like the other guys. Um, we're going to provide another means of authentication, be it something sent to your email address or a cell phone, a text message, something like that. Um, there's just too much money. It's just too liquid. It's just it's not reversible on the uh, Bitcoin transfers, things like that. So mm -hmm. we're definitely expanding on that, and that's going to happen quickly. We can't wait. Okay, that's a great idea. Um, you know, obviously Google and a lot of a lot of businesses are using that dual authentication with a cell phone text message coming back and all that. I don't know how that works internationally, but at least in the U.S., that could be very secure. Well, it's, it's actually not that bad internationally. I know Google actually uh, uses it internationally, and I actually use it down here in Chile on, uh, on my cell phone from Google. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is it's going to be optional. Uh, we're going to mm -hmm. highly encourage it, but mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely going to be optional. Um, you, know, you know, hey, we make it available. It's free. We suggest you use it. But if mm -hmm. you don't want to, we're not going to force you to. Okay. You just speak loud because the mic's over there for Skype. <laughs> oh, is it? And hold oh. this up 
or pin okay. on. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, no, I just want to ask uh, when something like that would be implemented. Um, because I know that's on a lot of people's minds right now is strengthening uh, security, not only uh, from your end, but from the user's end as well. Um, even though, you know, um, we need to also make sure that, the, that your end is secure um, because, you know, the user end isn't such a big factor, but it definitely is a factor. Well, I think the user end is definitely a big factor. I think it, I think there definitely needs to be more education in the community. I think one thing that's really simple, but uh, I'm going to implement tonight, will be uh, putting up a warning that says use a complex password. It should be at least this many characters, and it should use number and letters, because uh, a brute force attack, if they know your account name, is really not that tough. Um, and we honestly can't do anything about that. If your password is is Bruce Bruce, and somebody sets a dictionary attack on it, it's going to come back pretty quick. Mm -hmm. um, as far as implementing the uh, the other more advanced features, uh, as quick as possible. I mean, we're we're on it right now, and uh, it can't wait. So, I want to say days, um, but I don't want to promise you a real specific date, just in case we can't reach it. And um, what about uh, a lot of people want to know exactly how the databases are being stored, what kind of encryption is involved. And what kind of security uh, measures are being taking place? You know, not enough to sort of compromise your security, but enough, you know, to give us some confidence that there's some people uh, that are talented in what they're doing. Uh, do you think uh, maybe f sometime soon uh, that we could get somebody on there? And uh, because I know that you guys don't want to say anything without compromising yourself, so maybe one of the technical people. Uh, would be able to help us with that um, because I think that would put a lot of people at uh, peace of mind. Well, like I said, I'm not a programmer, but I am a little bit more technical than Adam. Now, if you want to talk about finance, he's, he, he talk about quantitative finance and analytics and all that stuff, he's your guy. Uh, mm -hmm. The passwords are all definitely encrypted. None of them are in uh, clear text. And uh, I'm not sure exactly which algorithm or how they're salted or anything like that. Um, which would be giving a little more information away, but they're definitely encrypted, and um, you're going to have a real tough time breaking them. What does salted mean? I, I don't know what that means. I, I'm even less technical, I guess. It has something to do with hashing. Um, I don't want to say anything because I'll probably get it wrong, but I know it's related to uh, hashing. It's related to hashing, okay. All right, so... <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, these are, these are all just real security questions. I mean... The, uh, the big banks um, must have teams of people that this is all they do, right? I mean, right, right. And, and one, one big part of security is trying to keep it as simple as possible as well. The more moving parts you have, the more things can go wrong. So um, like I said, or like Adam said, our lead programmer, uh, he wants to, to kind of maintain a low profile, but uh, I think eventually it's going to come out. He can't stay secret too long. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's extremely qualified. I mean, he's, he's taught these things. He's been doing these things for years. I mean, this is not, this is not new to him. Um, and if any time he has an issue, he definitely gets on the phone and he calls up people that are more knowledgeable than him in certain areas and speaks with them. So uh, I am 100% confident in our system, and uh, I've just been impressed with him since day one. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, Jared, um, would you happen to know uh, what kind of encryption is being used for the passwords? Um, it's like SHA or, or something similar? Uh, I'll be completely honest. I, I don't know. He could tell you if he was here, if he wanted to. And then <laughs> another big... Uh, I, know it's, I know it's pretty high level. I would, I would just guess SHA 256. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to ask him. I don't want to give out any misleading information. Uh, they also uh, want to know about the options and future trading. What about um, it? Like, is it coming or what? It's, it's coming. It's coming for sure. And definitely Adam's the guy for that. Um, I'll be completely honest, we're concentrating on security, we're concentrating on providing uh, good customer service to the people that we do have, and uh, we're doing things like on the uh, automation for our payments. Uh, we manually verify every single one. Um, I've personally verified over a thousand payments just to ensure that the automation system is running correctly. That's, another, that's the kind of thing. Um, you don't want to let it run wild until you're 100% confident that it's going to work. So basically, it, we've only been up uh, 10 days. And we're, we're basically manually checking everything, watching everything, if it's automated or not, just to make sure that we're 100% confident before we let it go. Um, 
naturally, once that's done, we'll begin looking at more things like options, futures, and other types of trading like that. Also, um, I believe higher volume would uh, they would benefit more from higher volume. So we're going to roll them out in time. Also, at this point, um, I would say the average user isn't really demanding them. Obviously, people do want it, but uh, that's definitely an advanced feature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely an advanced feature. Yeah, I mean, it, the most important thing is securing what we have. It's, it, it's, I mean, it takes a lot of uh, work and, and skill and all that to create a, an exchange site uh, anyway. But to make it secure seems like uh, a huge challenge. I, I don't know how you guys do it. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, it seems like something that not your average programmer would be able to take on. Exactly, and the fact that it's Bitcoin brings in a few other things that make it even more scary. Uh, the fact that the transactions aren't reversible. Uh, you could send the Bitcoins out and, <laughs> and they're out there. Mm -hmm. um, so little things like that take it, you know, make it a little more complicated. Also, um, it's just, it's, it's a new area, it's, it's new ground. Um, but like we said before, definitely, it's, it's a priority. Uh, the security is, I would say security is our top concern. Um, you know, no matter how nice you are in emails, no matter how good your exchange rate, your, your commission rates are and all that, um, at the end of the day, if, <laughs> if the money goes poof, uh, <laughs> yeah. you're done. Do you, um, how often do you, do you guys talk to, uh, to, to Mark uh, over at Mount Gox? Uh, we haven't really talked to him that much. Um, I, I shot him an email right after this, and I said, hey, we're, we'll help you with anything you can. And uh, he wrote me an email back that was really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, we might have exchanged a few posts on the forums uh, months ago, but honestly, we haven't been that in touch. Um, and that's something I'd like to change. Uh, mm -hmm. I definitely don't see this as the end to Mount Gox. I think, uh, I think Mark has provided a great service, and I honestly see him as a pillar in the community, which is... Uh, yeah. I think everybody else would agree. I mean, people are you know rallying around him, supporting him. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely one thing we would change. Um, I think everyone could benefit by a, a better line of communication. Uh, we are competitors, but this is a unique market where we actually encourage competition. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's just good for the community. And as long as there's more sites that show up that are, that are uh, reputable, secure, and open and transparent, I, I encourage even more competition. Right. What um, some people have asked, you know, um, is this kind of an opportunistic thing for Trade Hill because, uh, you know, there's some sort of a promotion going on in the forum or whatever? And how do you answer that? Like, uh, that, uh, <laughs> you know, I know that we have you on right now, and when this is really about Mount Gox, the reason we have you on is because uh, Mark is not available, he's in Tokyo. And uh, people have to realize that uh, it's very early in the morning. He was like, actually, when I reached him, he was on his morning commute to get into, uh, into the office. So uh, he's going to be actually here momentarily. We should uh, bring him up on the phone soon. But, um, uh, but what, you know, really, what do you have to say to, to Mark and Mount Gox about all this? I mean, we're, we're willing to help any way we can. I mean, I, I feel for him. I mean, this is... I mean, we feel confident in our system, but this is our biggest fear. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's rough. Um, in regards to, uh, in regards to your previous question about the opportunistic timing mm -hmm. or perceived opportunistic timing, um, to be completely honest, Adam and I spent uh, a couple hours last night working on the uh, profiles, and we were going to release them last night, and then, and then we said, hey, let's just release them tomorrow in the morning. Um, so we can be there and answer the initial posts, you know, because obviously um, a lot of people are asking who we are and whatnot. I've heard everything from we're, we're CIA, and uh, I was responsible for the uh, the death of Allende, who was the, the Chilean president killed in the 1973, I believe. Um, you know, so. No, it's, it's not true. And we wanted to be there to, to respond to the immediate posts. Unfortunately, uh, we released it right about the same time. Um, had it been a few hours early, it wouldn't probably have looked as suspicious. Yeah. But uh, we've definitely got documents, and I'll send you, Bruce, if you'll vouch for us, uh, mm -hmm. that show that the uh, everything was written last night. Every, what do you mean everything was written last night? Uh, oh, you mean the post, promotion? Yeah, post, no. In, in regards to who we are, our profiles, and everything else. Right, yeah. Yeah, I totally believe that. I mean, obviously, you didn't anticipate that this. 
Uh, what's your take on why uh, this hacker broke in and had access for three days and, and, and uh, didn't either uh, leave it a secret or um, why they took two days to disclose it? Well, here's the thing. I honestly, I mean, Mark's a good guy, and I, I, I trust him. I believe what he said, and I honestly don't think that if he knew there was a hacker in there, he wouldn't have shut down. Mm -hmm. So, uh, my opinion, uh, I just, I just, I, I don't think that they were in there running around loose with Mark knowing it and him not acting on it. That's just, that's just crazy. Mm -hmm. I would be one. I'd be really disappointed, but two, I just don't believe that he would do that. Uh, my take on the way he acted. Um, there's a thousand dollar limit, which, as far as I know, is still uh, runs parallel, runs with the Bitcoin as well. So as of a couple of days ago, if you wanted to take out Bitcoins, you were capped at roughly fifty, right, at twenty dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. My guess would be he said, "Okay, I can take a thousand dollars out, or I can take fifty Bitcoins out, or I could do a massive sell-off, drop the price next to nothing, and then transfer out a large amount of Bitcoins." Right. Um, whether he was actually pulled it off. Um, I have no idea. I sure hope not. Um, I'm assuming Mark would notice something like that and put a stop to it. Uh, if he did, I would imagine he would say, I can transfer out uh, this large quantities of Bitcoin at one cent or whatever, and the price will rebound. Um, and even if it rebounds only a dollar or something, he has a lot more Bitcoins that are worth um, worth a lot of money. So I'd imagine that was his attempt to get around uh, Gox's system. And I, I sure hope it doesn't work, but I don't want to speculate. Um, on what exactly did happen, because uh, Mark and I haven't talked about that, and um, it might have just been limited to a thousand dollars, which I hope it was. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, I just got a question over here. Uh, somebody asked, "Does Trade Hill have a limit on withdrawals?" And in the event no. of a I'm massive sell-off, in the event of a massive sell-off, how would that you know be handled? <sighs> That's a good question. Uh, no, we don't have we don't have a massive. I'm sorry, we don't have a limit on withdrawals, but uh, if we see something fishy going on, we'll just shut the, we'll shut the exchange down immediately um, and, and then look at it and say, hey, did somebody get hacked and did somebody dump a large amount? Um, mm -hmm. If we're going we're gonna to discuss more about this and we'll be open within the community. Um, so, I, think it's, I think it's a community issue as well uh, because this isn't, this isn't a market like, uh, like we're used to. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's different. It's small. One person can have a lot more of an impact. One person can affect the, the value a lot more. So right. it's something we definitely need to talk about as a community and see what the community wants. Does the community want us to interfere with the market and manipulate it in ways like that? Or do they want us to just let it, what happens happens? Um, you know, what if an early, early adopter legitimately decides to dump uh, 20,000 bitcoins? Right. Does, does the community want him to just sell them off cheap and go? Or do we want to uh, try and trying to affect that. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunity for discussion there. Some people, in a, uh, or at least one person maybe repeatedly is asking in the chat room, uh, what about sec uh, bounties for security on Trade Hill? Like, uh, I, I guess what they mean is uh, offering a bounty for someone who can hack into the system. Is that a good idea? Uh, <laughs> I think it's a fine idea. I think it's a fine idea because as it stands, uh, it, it essentially already exists. The bounty, if you can hack in, is what's inside. So, <laughs> off, so offering That's something true. is, uh, it's almost like saying, well, if you can get in, we'll give you a little less, you know? Yeah. But uh, we did that in the beginning, and we had a lot of people look, and uh, we had some pretty skilled people give it a shot, and uh, nobody was able to collect. Wow. Um, but every time you make a change, you have to reevaluate, and uh, we're definitely bringing in more professionals mm -hmm. to do that. Okay. Sounds good. Well, I think we should take a break now and uh, get up to uh, see if we can get uh, Mark on the phone in Tokyo. This is about the time. So um, thanks for joining us. Jay. That's uh, Mark hang. from Mount Gox. Yeah, Just Mark, exactly. Forward. Mark from Mount Gox. So uh, if you want to hang on, Jared, um, uh, you can uh, stay on the line with us if you want, and uh, I'll get Mark on, the, on with us, okay? Sure, sure. Thank you. All right. Sounds good. So uh, we'll take a break right now. And uh, Ed, you want to stop recording? And then uh, stop broadcast. Okay. Did you stop broadcast? Ed?